People, we are back and it is good to be back as well. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. Don't forget as well to like and share the vids. Bloody hell, we've only been gone like five or six days and so much has happened in the world of boxing. Oscar De La Hoya is threatening Eddie Hearn. Uh, Javante Davis is in jail. Anthony Joshua is saying some interesting things on his Instagram. Look, we've got a lot to catch up with and we will catch up with everything. And... And this Wednesday, we're doing a live. We're doing a live this Wednesday, 8 p.m. Guaranteed, put it in your diaries. The internet is now firing, my camera's working, no excuses. We haven't done a live for months and we're gonna do one. Eight o'clock this Wednesday, because I do think there is a lot to talk about. All right, let's let's um, let's see where we are this week. Um, a couple of big fights this week, isn't there? Sonny Edwards makes his zone debut. Um, I'm not there for it, which is going to be disappointing. Um, I'm going to the Champions League final. I'm working on that. But good luck to Sonny. We'll talk about that separately. Josh Taylor, Tiafimo Lopez. That's a big one this weekend. Josh Taylor uh, says, Tiafimo Lopez makes a lot of mistakes, a lot of holes in his game. I'm going to exploit them. I still don't know if we know where Josh is. I mean, 15 months ago, Josh Taylor... He's not only the best 140 pounder, he is, in my opinion, a top seven pound for pounder. Maybe even higher than that. He was undisputed. He had that fight against Jack Cattrall where, look, I think the majority of people thought he lost and he hasn't fought since. That's 15 months ago. So basically, it's almost like he's coming off a loss and hasn't fought. Bear in mind also, he is switched trainer. He's with a good trainer now, Joe McNally. Some might say he's with a good trainer before and Ben Davison. Some might say he was a good trainer before that in Shane McGuigan. What I'm trying to get at is, I mean, he switched trainers, I think, three of his last fights, maybe even three of his last three fights. It's not good either, is it? I mean, look, at the end of the day, if you land on the best trainer, then it's okay. Like, if he stays with Joe now for the next couple of years, then he's made a good decision, right? But if it doesn't work out and he switches trainers again, then, okay, there's a problem there. But yeah, there is a lot of question marks over both fighters uh, this weekend. But I think... A lot on Josh Taylor. Like I have Josh Taylor as a favourite to beat Teofimo Lopez. But, I mean, Teofimo Lopez, we know, can sometimes pull out the bag. He did that against Lomachenko. He's explosive. Um, he's powerful. This is the weight he belongs at. I think he'll probably even go to 147. But there are some question marks over him. I mean, what Josh said was correct. There are a lot of mistakes. I think we saw that against Sandor Martin. There are a lot of holes. I think we saw that against Sandor Martin as well. The thing about Josh here and that Jack Cattrall loss or performance, there's a couple of things there now. Did Josh maybe go into that ring underestimating Jack a little bit? Like we all did, if we're honest. Maybe yes. But is Jack Cattrall a lot better than we all thought? Having seen Jack, what, last weekend, a couple of weeks ago? Yes, the answer is yes there as well. So... I feel like maybe we're reading into that performance a bit too much. Jack maybe is just very, very good. Like Jack Cattrall could be a top five 140 pound fighter right now. I, I can't name you five better, if I'm honest with you, I can't. I think, I again, I haven't watched him now against Josh. I haven't watched him on the weekend against Dara Foley. And I know Dara Foley is not an elite, elite, um, elite 140 pounder. But again, that was a guy coming off a 15 month layoff. It looked very, very good. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued as to where Josh is. Again, we reverse ourselves or rewind back 15 months. Josh was undisputed, man. And Josh was so good. We were talking about Josh coming up to 147 and picking up a few of those guys as well. I remember it. I remember it like it was yesterday where people were saying Josh versus Terence Crawford. Not saying Josh would have beaten Terence Crawford, but you have to give respect to someone that's cleaned up all the belts in one division going up to challenge the King or whoever in the other division. And Josh was that guy. Josh was that guy. I, I think, and my only worry for Josh is, once you've done what Josh has done, you're almost going round again. And what I mean by that is Josh has become undisputed. The time was to go up. Like, honestly, I, I thought if it wasn't a Jack Cattrall rematch, what we stand at 144. If he's always spoken about the weights a bit tight. It's time to go up. He hasn't done that. He's He's... He's maybe at the risk of staying in the division a bit too long. A bit too long where there are hungry, strong, young kids coming through. I'm not saying Tia Fimo's that, but that could happen. It really could. Maybe his time to jump to 147 was after the Jack Catchell 
win. Maybe that was the time, right? You scattered all the belts. Okay, I've become undisputed. I've, I've conquered what I wanted to do. Let me now go up. Um, he's chose not to. And it's a big money fight. Um, so I get it. But man, I'm very interested to see how he looks. Because I think Josh Taylor, like the best Josh Taylor performance I've seen, I know some people will point to the pro grade fight just because um, pro grade at the time was probably number two in the division. Um, and it was razor thin and pro grade now. Look where he is. Most people think he's the best in the division. So that I can understand why people think that. For me, it's the Ramirez fight. Honestly, I think I think that was just almost punch perfect. It was vicious on the front foot. Remember that uppercut on the back foot? Beautiful. Um, that was his best performance. If that Josh Taylor is still around, bear in mind that fight with Ramirez must have been about two and a half years ago. If that Josh Taylor is still around, Josh Taylor's too good for Teofimo Lopez. And look, I get it. Teofimo's faster and maybe more explosive, but Josh Taylor's too good for him. If that Josh is around, I think that Josh is still around. I think he's got the bit between his teeth and I think he's going to show people just how good he is and that he still is, I think, the best at 140 pounds. And again, I get it, Pro Grey, I get it, right? A couple of young kids coming through. But um, let's not sleep on what Josh has done in the last four years. Josh has, Josh has beaten some very good fighters, unbeaten fighters, and he's not become undisputed by fighting someone that has all the belts. No disrespect to Devin Haney, but he's not done that. Like Devin Haney beating Cambosa. So no, look, I've got all of them. He has collected those motherfuckers one by one. And I, for me, that's always the better undisputed. I know people might, well, you know, it's not your fault. If you, you fight who you fight. If that guy's got all the belts and he's got all the belts. But there is some beauty in collecting all the belts as opposed to beating someone, i.e. Jermaine Taylor Hopkins, again, Devin Haney, Cambosa, and just taking all the belts. But look, really looking forward to it. Really, really looking forward to it. Um, it's a shame we can't do a live watch along for it again. I leave the country on Thursday, but um, look, we'll talk more about it um, on Wednesday when we do a live. So remember, tune in to the live this Wednesday, eight o'clock. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Sonny Edwards. We'll talk about AJ. We'll talk about whatever you want because you deserve it because it's been so long. All right. Um, Tyson Fury to get a new mandatory soon. WBC Prez says Joshua is possible. Next. I'm tired of all that stuff already, yeah. Ahern uh, confirms offer sent to Dillian White for AJ rematch targeted for August 12th. Yeah, it looks like that's now going to go ahead. Although AJ did say on his Instagram a couple of days ago that I don't know what everyone's effing talking about or something along those lines. But it looks like that's going to go ahead. I wonder how um, I wonder how big a fight this is for the public. Obviously, we saw Joshua Franklin and it did in the end sell out. But it by no means was like the old school AJ of just selling out immediately. So I do wonder what the appetite for AJ White is. Um, I, I think there's um, there is definitely an animosity between the two, which will help the sell. Like the press conference between these two will be interesting, um, and I think it's good that AJ um, is busy. I think it's great that AJ is going to have three fights this year if obviously he's successful in this one. But um, I, I don't think it's a huge fight, but I do think there is going to be. A lot of interest just because, again, there's animosity between them. What will be interesting, bear in mind, AJ Franklin wasn't on pay-per-view. Will this one be? I wonder. Don't know why I did that. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, Shakur Stevenson, unimpressed with Jermaine Ortiz. I would beat the F out of him. Shakur Stevenson has been doing some interviews uh, recently. I don't know who the guy is that's interviewing him, but I, I do, I'm only seeing his snippets. I haven't seen the full thing. And one of those questions the guy asked him about was Manny Pacquiao. And he, he said he would have effed up Manny Pacquiao or something. And then he went on to say, like, he would have to make sure that Manny Pacquiao was tested. You know, there's always been that labelled and rumoured with Manny Pacquiao. Steady. Steady, Shakur. I mean, I love Shakur Stevenson. I think he's a fantastic fighter. You guys know that I've said that. I think he will be a pound for pounder. He will be a free, maybe four weight world champion. But we're talking Manny Pacquiao here. Manny Pacquiao. Bruh, <laughs> like steady. I don't mind the other names. I don't mind when he, Jermaine Ortiz. I don't mind your Ryans. You know, oh, I'll, I'll F up Devin Haney. You're talking about one of the greatest fighters of all time in Manny Pacquiao. Um, yeah, I, like not yet. Steady young line. I think some might say it's a good thing, right? He's, you know, but I didn't even like the way he said I'll F him up. I just don't like when there was a, there was a level of disrespect there that I didn't think was needed. Manny Pacquiao is one of the all-time greats. 
all-time greats, eight-weight world champion, five lineal. <laughs> Mate. Uh, Devin Haney proved he's the best fighter in the world, says Bill Haney. How did he do that, sir? <laughs> Come on, Bill, man. I like Bill. Bill's a great guy. But where, where and why and how did he prove by getting a razor fin decision, which very, very many people think he didn't get? Why did that prove he's the best fighter in the world? No, it certainly didn't. I mean, there are a number of fights out there for him to prove that, but that one, what was it, two, three weeks ago, certainly didn't prove it. Uh, Keith Furman says he expects to fight in the summer. Your boy's got to get back. Next. Uh, Crawford, and when I say next with Keith Furman, because I probably have, I've been doing this channel for a number of years, and I've probably said that line, that Keith Furman line, about 50 times, because Keith has said that about 50 times. So it's not a disrespect to Keith, it's I've heard that before, and I'm not going to fall for it again, because Keith has been doing that for the last four or five years. Yeah, I'm expecting a fight here, I've got to come back, I'm coming. Until, until Keith... Until I see Keith lace him up and literally do get in the ring with someone, I don't listen to what he says anymore. Uh, Crawford, confident, spent showdown will end the pound for pound debate. Crawford has been doing a hell of a lot of media, not your national media. So he's not been, you know, he's obviously we saw that ESPN thing with him and Stephen A. Smith and Errol Spence. But I mean, just your local YouTuber guys, he's been putting himself out there. Like I thought Errol would be doing that. It's almost like Errol's been tucked away. And finally... You guys are seeing Crawford, the Crawford that I've known of for years. That personality is now finally coming out. It's a shame that it's taken this for it to come out. But um, yeah, I, I think so. I, I said this to Tony Belly when we did our pound for pound list, that whoever wins this is pound for pound number one. I mean, most people have Crawford number one already and Errol number four. So if Errol beats Crawford or Crawford beats Errol, that guy, whoever wins is pound for pound number one, without a doubt, without a doubt. Because I don't think there's anything. I think the only argument really is if Fury fights Usyk and Usyk wins. And maybe um, Inoue Fulton. If Inoue beats Fulton. If Fulton beats Inoue. A lot of people don't have Fulton in their top 10. Maybe not even top 15 yet. But if Inoue beats Fulton. I think probably Inoue probably stays. But I think it's Usyk. If Usyk was to fight Fury and beat Fury. Then he's number one for the rest of mankind. Rest of mankind. Uh, Barry McGuigan. Akoli couldn't read Billum Smith. Uh, the fourth round changed everything. Was the fourth round the knockdown? I've tried to get that fight out of my head, if I'm honest with you. Although, although I think the video I did scoring it 113-112, I think, proved it wasn't as one-sided as you guys thought, even with the knockdowns. Um, if that is the knockdown round, then yeah, maybe it showed Billum Smith that he can hurt. Because if anyone told you before someone's going to get knocked down in the fourth round, I think a lot of you would have said, oh, a Cody knocks down Billum Smith. Um, although, you know what, with Akoli, I was just looking at his last three or four fights. I think he's got like, including this one now, obviously, I don't think he's knocked. I think his last three have all gone to points, which is interesting, isn't it? All gone to points. So maybe the power that we, there's, there's, two, there's two things happening here. Maybe he's sapping so much energy making the cruiserweight limit that the power is just not as what it was. And, you know, as he's getting older, he's getting bigger and it's more difficult to make the weight. Or he's maybe not a puncher at the top level that we think he is. Don't know. I'm trying to understand what is what. But yeah, I think Billum Smith got confidence um, from knocking down Akoli. And Akoli maybe was a bit more hesitant to come in, maybe. Or at least come in in trade as opposed to coming in a hold, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Crawford. Um, this kind of uh, goes against what I said here. But fight with Spence sells itself. We don't need to act crazy. Um, yeah, I think ticket sales. Sorry, the tickets went on sale a couple of days ago, right? And people were telling me already the ticket prices are crazy. I've begged the zone, like, can we do something on it? Obviously, it's not our event, but can we not still be there? Um, but look, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be incredible. It's going to do big numbers. It's going to do huge numbers. It's proper. I saw someone um, on Twitter. I don't know his name. Can't remember his name. Apologies if he watched these videos. Um, but he said that what boxing should do, and he kind of showed an old video of a big fight. I can't remember what fight it was, but it, they introduced people that were, you know, like the greats of in and around that weight class and the crowd went crazy for them. Imagine before Spence and Crawford, they introduced like five or six greats from that weight class just to give it like that kind of boost. So so you, you get um, um, Sugar Ray Leonard is around. Duran is still obviously with us. Um, 
Who else are you going to get? You're going to get Floyd. You get Manny Pacquiao. You get Cotto. All of those guys in the ring. <laughs> yeah, that would be sick. Shane Mosley. Get them all in the ring. Get the crowd get you know excited. And then you let these two go. Love it. Love it. Um, all right, where are we? At Fury's promoter. If Joshua doesn't fight Tyson, why doesn't he fight Hergovic? If Joshua doesn't fight Tyson... Because Joshua's going to fight Dylan White. Why don't Fury fucking fight Hergovic? Fuck's sake. It's like he can't get a fight. It's like the WBC. Let me understand this. The WBC, lineal heavyweight champion, who sells out Wembley Stadium, generates millions, can't seem to get a fight right now. And don't tell me it's because of fear. There's obviously other stuff at play here. What's going on? I don't understand what's going on. Um. Uh. What's this? Uh, Clarissa Shields, I have more skills, will, and heart than the other girls. Cl Clarissa's in a very tough spot, isn't she? Um, she's clearly too good for these girls that she's fighting. Obviously, look, Savannah and her were a great fight, and maybe that's the only one. But I, I don't know who else is out there between... Look, you, you even look at the champions at 154. Normally, you say, okay, there may be a champ from 154 going up. Th that's Terry Harper and Tasha Jonas. Too small. Too small for Clarissa. Too Far too small. Um... I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, hopefully there's someone right now, maybe just, I don't know, that's that 160 that we don't really know. It's 2-0, and 3-0, and o, coming off a good Olympic cycle or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, she's running out of opponents. She's running out of opponents, man. You might, she might have to almost do, you know what the problem is? She, she hasn't got obviously the KO power. So normally, you know, in Mike Tyson, the 80s, it was like bum of the month. Tyson was just knocking guys out. And you weren't caring about who Tyson was fighting. You just wanted to see Tyson knock someone out. If Clarissa had power, that could be the same for Clarissa, but she doesn't have the power. So she's in a weird position, Clarissa. Very weird position. Um, Fury's promoter. Uh, Usyk, only interested in big paydays in Saudi Arabia. Don't make Tyson the greedy person. They're both greedy. They're both very, very greedy. Tyson is greedy. That's fact. He's greedy. He says he fights for free. Won't fight for free. They're all greedy. All of them. Every single one of them. This is not me having a dig at Tyson. AJ's greedy. Dillian White's greedy. All of them are greedy. All of them. And now the Saudis are chucking in money that that is obviously clearly more than what they've got paid before. They're all now wanting more money. Wanting more money. It's a weird, weird situation. Um, all right, anything else? Uh, Marius Vac gets a TKO win in Stay Busy Fight uh, on track Fraser Clark on June 16th. I don't know what's left of Vac, but Fraser should get through him. Be interesting to see if Fraser can stop him, but Fraser should beat him. Should beat him. Um, what's this? Uh, where are we? Ryan Garcia. What's going on with Ryan and Oscar, by the way? Online as well. So they're, they're having this weird beef online, which they couldn't just phone each other and beef it out? Text each other and beef it out? Isn't texting the same thing as Twittering or tweeting? Isn't it the same? Can't you do that behind closed doors? Why have you got to do it on Twitter? How bad? Anyway, Ryan Garcia, I messaged Haney and said to him, I thought Loma edged it out. Yeah. If, if Haney's that guy, he gives Loma the rematch. And gives Loma the rematch. Anytime there's some sort of bit of controversial, there it's true. Andre Ward Kovalev. Anytime there's a bit of like, oh, one second, you do it again. Obviously, everyone will point to Floyd versus Maidana. Sometimes you just do it again. You do it again. I know it's not the same, but George Groves, Carl Frotch, you do it again. You do it again. Let's see. Let's see if Haney will. I mean, Loma's doing his part, right? He's really trying to act as though he was the hardest done by, by any boxer in the history of the sport. Not so much, Loma. But um, yeah. Do it again. Um, uh, Baturbi of trainer concerned views Callum Smith as complex fight. He's the best boxer we faced. No, Vosdick is. Vosdick's a better boxer than Callum Smith. I I think so. I think so. But Callum Smith comes with his own his own um, skill set. That's going to cause there's no doubt he's going to cause Baturbi of some problems. Callum Smith under Buddy McGirt looks a lot better as well. Looks so much more on the front foot. It's like, okay, I'm going to use this size and this frame I've got as opposed to staying on the back foot a bit. So he looks good. But um, yeah, I'll still say Vosdick is a bit better than Callum Smith. Or at least the version of Vosdick that fought Viterbi of. But yeah, good fight, man. Really good fight. It's a shame that 
Uh, the fight isn't over here, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, Dana White to Tyson Fury. Uh, you want the title of the baddest man on the planet. I'll make John Jones for... Oh, shut up, Dana. This is the guy that says, we don't make gimmicky fights. And all of a sudden, you're asking a guy with absolutely no skills in MMA to go into the octagon and take on John Jones, the greatest MMA fighter of all time. So let me hear this right. The guy with no skills in MMA is going to take on the greatest MMA fighter in history in a cage. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. Some of you will be like, okay, yeah, but Connor went and fought Floyd and Floyd was the great. It's slightly different. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, like John Jones, as much as some say that Floyd could have knocked out Connor in the first round, I don't know if that's true, but John Jones could literally rip this guy to shreds in 20 seconds. In 20 seconds. Like, just destroy him. He ain't trying to stand up with him. He'll take him down and rip his legs off. Stupid. It's like they know there is nothing exciting out there for John Jones right now. There's nothing. There's nothing. Like, as much as Dana talks, that who, who, what's exciting for John? Zero. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Um, all right, guys, girls, quick video just to say we're back. We are going to do more videos because that's what we do. But peace and love.